Hi guys, Mike here from Kratos Nutrition and we are back with another Whiteboard Wednesday on the Kratos Nutrition YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk to you about our top three things that will transform your training. Now these aren't the sort of things that you would normally consider uh, when you read in a men's health magazine or something like that. It's not clickbaity style stuff that's just going to get more views and more likes. This is real stuff that's actually going to transfer to your performance. That means it's not sexy, but it works. So the three things that we're going to talk to you about today are nutrition, stress management, and sleep. If you're still with us after me saying those three things, well done. You obviously care about your performance. Number one, nutrition. Let's have a look. The questions I want you to ask yourselves are, firstly, are you eating enough? And secondly, are you getting enough protein? From a performance point of view, these are two critical questions that we must constantly remind ourselves of. The majority of athletes that I deal with, especially at a CrossFit Games and Sanctionals level, are under eating, certainly in terms of calories and in terms of protein. So how can we fix this? Simplest way is to track your food. Firstly, calculating your macros and making sure that you're hitting the right numbers uh, to sustain your training volume. If you're unsure of how to do this, we have done a previous video on how to calculate your macros and that'll tell you everything you need to know on how to break down your nutrition into manageable chunks. Remember that we're eating to thrive and not to survive. We're not just eating the bare minimum amount of calories that we need to get through day to day, we're eating to improve and perform. We're putting our bodies through an awful lot of stress in terms of what we're doing in the gym. So we need to fuel that body so it recovers between those sessions. Otherwise, we're gonna start breaking down, getting injuries, overtraining, or underperforming. Number two on our list is stress management. Again, the questions that I want you to ask yourself is, are you organized? What stresses you out? And can you change those things that stress you out? Now, I understand having running a business myself with Kratos Nutrition, programming for athletes, and having previously run a very busy affiliate, that juggling too much can really take its toll on you in terms of stress. Our bodies can't always differentiate between the stress that we're putting ourselves on inside the gym and the stress that's coming into us from outside the gym. So things like dealing with our children, dealing with owning our business, dealing with work stress and relationship stress, that all takes its toll on our bodies as well. What we need to do is try and manage that as best as possible so that we can focus on performance rather than being pulled and pushed in different directions by things that are out of our control. A couple of things that I suggest that we look at here are journaling, getting a day-to-day -day planner, so making sure that you're as organized as possible. A big thing that I get asked an awful lot is how do I fit things in, in terms of training and in terms of juggling business. I schedule my training the same as I would schedule a dentist appointment or uh, an important business call. That hour, two hour slot is scheduled in my diary and that doesn't change for anything. Journaling is a great tool as well when we look at uh, being reflective on our day and it allows us to see if there's anything that we've been doing regularly that doesn't align with what our goals are. If these things start coming up regularly in our journals, then we can start thinking about ways to change that. There's actually a very good app that a friend of ours, Alec Harwood, is working on called the Teacup app that allows you to reflect on your day, looking at all aspects of life that could be affecting you from a stress management point of view. And it's a really good way of helping you manage that going forward. Final piece of the puzzle, and probably the most important as it does relate to both of the other topics is sleep. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. Now the questions I want you to ask yourself here, and the answer is no to both of them, regardless of who you are, is are you getting enough sleep? And is your sleep high enough quality? Now, in terms of getting enough, that might sound simple, but the easiest way to do this is to track your sleep. You can't manage what you can't measure. I like the Whoop band for this, as you can see on my wrist, um, but there are plenty of different applications that you can use for this and bits of hardware, things like Fitbit, things like Apple iWatch that will all help and track your sleep. The Whoop band I like because it calculates your, your strain and the amount of sleep that you need based on that. And it also talks to you about the quality of your sleep. Now, there are a few things that we can consider when we're trying to improve our sleep quality. The one is the environment in which we're sleeping making sure that we're in a cool, dark and quiet room are very important things. It sounds simple, but most of us don't do this. 
We're normally tucked up in a warm bed and our temperature increases as we sleep when our body's going through its metabolic processes. There's normally some form of light, either from uh, a charger or a crack in the window or not dark enough curtains, things like that, that will creep in from outside lights and street lights that will affect your sleep quality also. And finally is noise. I live right next to a busy street. My bedroom window is close to the front of the house. So I wear earplugs when I go to sleep mitigate some of that noise and it helps me tremendously. Another thing to consider is blue light and the use of technology before we go to bed. If you're using technology or things that emit blue light like your phone close to bedtime then that is going to stimulate your brain and make you think that it's the middle of the day. We want to shift our light exposure away from blue light as soon as possible and certainly around sleep time. Obviously stress management can come into things when we're going to sleep as well so tying in what we talked about in our second point, the more we can manage that stress, the less will be on our mind when we're going to bed and the sooner we'll be able to drift off to sleep. The other thing to consider as well is hydration, which we touched on slightly in the nutrition point, making sure you're not drinking too much close to bedtime so you don't have to wake up in the middle of the night when nature calls. The final thing to consider is a zinc and magnesium supplement. Obviously I'm biased in this, but I have developed a supplement called ZMRX which includes zinc, magnesium, vitamin B6 and copper, as well as some other active ingredients such as valerian root, L-theanine and cysteine, which are all designed to help lower stress and improve sleep quality. If you want to give this a go or read more about it, there is a link below. Thanks again for watching guys. Uh, as always, we'll be back next week with another Whiteboard Wednesday. If there's anything you want us to cover, please just drop us a message or leave us a comment below. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe. And if you're already subscribing, don't be afraid to press that bell notification button so you get an alert every time we release a new video. Thanks again, guys. Take care.